Welcome to the Ambleside Online curriculum video. In this video, we're going to do a brief overview of the Ambleside Online curriculum, how you can navigate the website to find the curriculum, and how you can make use of it for your homeschool, your co-op, or your cottage school, um, whatever your family's needs are or your community's needs are in order to educate your children. Now, if on your page, for some reason, you're not seeing these three columns here, but rather they're stacked, uh, let me just show you that when you have a mobile device or it is um, shrunk, you would be seeing those three columns stacked on top of each other instead of in the columns. And so um, as I maximize my page, the page is responsive and it's going to revert back to the columns. Um, but again, if you're on a mobile device, you're going to see it as stacked. Um, sections rather than three separate columns side by side. When we say curriculum, it can mean a lot of things to many people. And so I just want to explain that very quickly. You may be thinking Ambleside Online because we have the name online on there that we're talking about a online school where your child would get registered online and come to their computer and that there are courses that are online available for them to take. That is not what Ambleside Online is. Ambleside Online also is not a curriculum package that you purchase. Um, many places offer a curriculum package and you would receive a box in the mail with all your books and your workbooks and everything else and it's one complete package for the school year. Um, that is not what Ambleside Online is. Neither is it a subject curriculum. In other words, sometimes people will purchase a geography curriculum or a history curriculum and they will pick and choose these curriculum and put them together into a uh, curriculum for their ch child. And that is not what Ambleside Online is. In fact, Ambleside Online does not sell its own product. Uh, the curriculum is not for sale. It is offered freely. And what it is, is a comprehensive framework that is provided for its users that is based on Charlotte Mason's philosophy of education and her methodology and it offers you a 36 week program split into three terms of 12 weeks each, term one, term two, term three, all three 12 weeks, resulting in a 36 year school year, or 36 week school year, sorry. <laughs> um, and that framework is provided for each year Beginning with year one through year 12, we do offer a year zero, which is considered a kindergarten or a preschool year. And that year is not an actual academic school year. And so there is no um, weekly schedule for that year. Ambleside Online does have areas that it does not provide. And in those cases, what it does is it links to providers of that curriculum. So for example, math, uh, Ambleside Online does not provide math, but it has looked into and provided options for math and links out to those math providers. Some of those are free and some are for charge, um, and those decisions are left to the parents. Um, what Ambleside does is simply provide the links and options. We provide the framework, again, by looking into the curricula that we feel are worth recommending and um, are good options for our families. And then we leave it to the families to be able to make those choices. So the framework is provided within context of Charlotte Mason's philosophy and her ideas. And then the decisions between those options are left up to the parents um, and the families because of the consideration of finances and or uh, curriculum learning. Uh, preference and or um, whatever choices, um, you know, conveniences matter to the to each individual family and their children. The reason we do that is because number one, we provide the framework for free so that anybody can use it. And we try to link to resources that are also free uh, as much as possible so that people who have very low income and or resources um, and maybe in remote areas um, and have a hard time accessing books and those types of things can make use of the curriculum uh, for very little. At the same time, we understand the flexibility uh, that is needed 
in uh, the diverse group of families that we serve. And so we understand that every family is different. Some people are working parents. Some people are stay-at-home parents. Some people uh, are single parents. Some people are um, single parents because the other parent is um, completely occupied. And or um, some people may have to finagle and work their schedule on the weekends um, or in the evenings. Um, so we just we understand that we are serving a diverse group of people. And for that reason, we don't uh, make it a rigid curriculum. We make it a framework which everybody can customize to their unique family's needs. And we think that that's the best way to serve the community that makes use of the uh, Animal Sign Online curriculum. And so um, that's uh, the framework that we are providing. And again, we link to all the resources and you would then purchase any of the books that you would want to have a hard copy of and or um, you may have to print uh, parts of the curriculum that you would need to print out. And so if you have a printer that can be helpful and or make use of it online. And so those are the those are the flexible options that uh, are available and how the Ambleside curriculum is uh, designed. So let's take a look at how the website is laid out for the curriculum areas. Um, you'll see curriculum mentioned here with a drop down menu. You'll see by year and all the independent years listed here. And we have by subject and multiple subjects listed here. Now, if we go down the page, we'll also notice that here we mention the curriculum in the center of the page. This is just an area where we more prominently feature some of the curriculum links. Um, overview of the main curriculum, AO for groups and emergency lesson plan. Those are actually going to be the same pages that are linked from here, the curriculum overview, AO for groups and emergency help. Do read the reviews when you get a chance. That's um, a great way to build your confidence that you're um, making use of a fabulous curriculum that is a wonderful option for your children and it's important to have confidence. Um, the years you'll notice are uh, may be unfamiliar in the terminology of how we uh, outline the years by calling them year zero, year one. Um, if you are in the US, we usually say first grade, second grade, um, but these years do correlate uh, two grade years as well. Year one would be first grade, year two is second grade, year three, third grade, etc. Um, this is the terminology used in the UK and so that's what Charlotte Mason um, indicated for her school years. Um, and if you are transfer, if you're beginning at the beginning, you're going to start, you know, at year zero, year one, and then um, on down the road. If you are transferring in from public school, you uh, would definitely want to go to our Amblesite Online Forum and um, check to make sure that you're getting your child into the right year. Amblesite is a rigorous curriculum that can sometimes um, be challenging in later years uh, if you're transferring in. And so you may want to just get a little advice on where to start um, your child and your specific situation. And over here, subjects, this is a way to go directly to um, subject areas and get information about them. So it's just a way that we map out the site for easy access to um, be able to access these things. And when you're doing your actual schedules, it's very helpful to be able to go directly to these areas of the site. So let's take a look at year one. I'm going to click on that here. And right away, you'll see that um, the general format of this page is that we land on the book list page, which is this first link here. Um, and we're going to find a quote up at the top, maybe a quote, a poem. And then we're going to find this little quick link box. This is where we're going to find all the links pertaining to year one, this particular year. And as we scroll down um, on this book list, we're going to find a basic overview here. This is just the year at a glance. What are the general time frame that we're going to be learning in history? Um, what kind of geography are we doing? Language arts, literature, what are we reading? Um, et cetera, et cetera. And then below that, we have some notes. Um, and on the book list, just like on a map, we have a key. And the reason we have a key is because we want to tell you things about the books in this book list without having to explain it at every single book. So we've made a key um, and here are the symbols. 
and then the description for what that means. So this little symbol here tells us it's a free e-text at archive.org. This book is available for free at archive.org. Um, K means Kindle, purchasing using Amblesite Online's Amazon.com affiliate link. We do have affiliate links and uh, that helps to fuel Amblesite Online's um, work that we do. And here, this little symbol means it's a free audiobook. It's little headphones at LibriVox, which is a volunteer uh, run and provided audio book website. Um, and many of our books are available on there. So you'll see other links here and these will update over time. Um, but what happens with the key is they, you will see them here at the end of books that are listed. So here we have a book called Trial and Triumph by Richard Hanala. And here is a key that says that you can purchase it from Animal Flight Online and it's also available for Kindle. And you'll see in brackets here, superscript numbers. These are notes for each of these books. If it's in red, that's a important note. Alert, alert, warning, warning. You might wanna know this about this book. There's some content here that you need to pay attention to. So don't miss these little uh, numerical notes. And these are just some other notes that may lead to uh, a book's uh, programming schedule and other things like that. Um, each book has its own um, unique needs um, for what we need to let you know about them. Now here in this box, this is just a box of quick links. And this uh, is what is listed below here. So you'll see Bible, history, biography, literature. And as we scroll down, we have Bible, history, biography, literature, etc. This is just a quick way to get down to the part of the page that you want to get to. If you wanna to jump to music, instead of scrolling, you just click that and it takes you right there. Okay, but let's scroll back up and uh, look at this book list. So here we have the book list for year one and it lists the books and you'll notice that there's these little asterisks in front of each of these books and what that is is uh, what term these books are used in. So here you have one, two, and three. Ambleside Online is designed as a curriculum that has 36 weeks of scheduled work and that's three terms of 12 weeks each. So 12, the first 12 weeks is term one, second 12 weeks is term two, and the uh, third 12 weeks is term three. And so this book here, Benjamin Franklin, is gonna be used in term one only. This one here, George Washington, is used in term two and scheduled in term two. Buffalo Bill is scheduled in term three. Here we see 50 Famous Stories Retold is scheduled for term one and two and Viking Tales is in ter term two and three. This just helps us to know, when do I need this book? If I have Buffalo Bill in term three, and I'm looking at actually purchasing books for my library at home, and to have the hard copy, I don't have to buy Buffalo Bill maybe right away. I can maybe wait until uh, you know the beginning of term two to purchase this book, and so I can budget better for it. Um, there's also the chance that your book will not be available readily because some of our books are, um, hard to come by, even though a lot of the times they're available online. Um, and so in that case, you may want to start looking earlier than later. Um, but so that's kind of how uh, this is laid out. Now, for copy work, we're not purchasing an actual book, um, but so we have links to certain things that pertain to that subject, like Ambleside Online's language arts scope and sequence for this level. Um, and the same thing with phonics. And um, so you can go all the way down and you'll see at the bottom of the page um, recommendations for the riches that we talked about earlier. This is your artist study, your composer study, um, hymns that could be sung during that school year, the folk songs that uh, we can sing, and um, free reading, which is always at the bottom. These are books, uh, as we mentioned earlier, that are for their free time. They are extra and some, many people get to all of them and many people don't. And so it's just a matter of, um, you know, your child's reading ability and the time that they have available. And so again, back up here, we see that we just, okay, looked at the book list. The next thing is the schedule. We'll go ahead and click on schedule. This is where we have the actual 
week by week. I'm going to scroll down here and come back to this in a little bit. This is where we have the week by week work for the schedule. So in week nine, you're going to be doing week nine's work. In week 10, you're going to be doing week 10's work. Now, as you can see, this is not a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday schedule. So it doesn't tell you what you're doing on a daily basis. What it is telling you is what's to be done for the week. The reason the schedule is laid out by week rather than by day is because not everybody has a week that looks the same. Some people have a co-op that they're a part of and they may spend one day a week having their co-op day and so they do their schooling in four days. Some people do school six days like Charlotte Mason did. She had Saturday school. Um, some people may have a grandparent that um, does their schooling with them two days a week and those days need to be lighter than the other days so that the parent can work. Uh, other people are part of a homeschool um, charter or um, things that just require a different kind of a schedule. So rather than uh, having a rigid schedule, the weekly work is provided and we think that that fits the needs of um, the diverse group of families that we serve. Also, <clears throat> children don't all read at the same uh, speed. Not all children in year three are going to be at exactly the same reading level. Children even within the same family don't all read at the same rate. And so um, having um, our island story chapter one, for example, here, um, for one child, you may have to schedule it only just once a week and that chapter will get read. Um, for other children, you may have to break it up into two or three readings in order for them to be able to um, complete that chapter. And so rather than having a rigid schedule, again, we leave that to the parents to be able to decide how they're going to make use of that book and um, at what, uh, how many readings they're going to split that up into or whether they split it up at all. And um, you'll see here we have week one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And at the end of week twelve, there's an optional exam week. That's because that's the end of term one. And you'll find at the end of week 24, you're also now at the end of a term, now term two. And so you have an optional exam week. And then our third term is the last term. And that is how our curriculum is designed. Again, three terms, 12 weeks each. Okay, now that we've looked at the week, week's work, the readings for the week, we are going to look in this area here. Now, as you can see, this box says daily work. And what that is, is the daily work that's going to be done in addition to the readings that you schedule out. And so your child will be doing copy work daily, five to 10 minutes a day, phonics or reading practice, recitation, mathematics, etc., including narrating what they, what they have read and or what was read to them. And so this is daily work. These are things that you're gonna add Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. If you're doing a five day week or if you're doing a four day week, it would be for those four days. Um, and then your weekly work over here, this is basically work that is not daily. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be um, done once a week exactly. It is just things that aren't daily and that are also not on the weekly. Let's go ahead and look at artist picture study and click on that under weekly work. Uh, so here's a subject page, art study. And when we scroll down, we find um, here's term one and the name of an artist. And this is the school year. And under here, we have one, two, three, four, five, six selections. And then we come to term two and again, we have six selections and the same with term three. Now our school year has 36 weeks and 12 weeks per term. So we only have six selections here. The way that you could handle that, um, some people will do it every other week. They will schedule an artist every other week. And our composer study is also um, set up with six selections per term so they can alternate back and forth. Um, some people, however, will schedule it each week and um, they may look at the um, artist and learn about the artist 
one week, as well as the background of the picture, um, in addition to doing uh, a study of the picture, looking at it and turning it over and then having your child narrate. And then the following week, they may um, maybe do an outline of the main features of the painting um, so that the child's um, encountering the painting again. And it's a two week study instead of a, a one time study. And so there are different options on how to handle that. And there are other resources that you can look at for how to do art study that you can um, find on the Ambleside website. You can see here, there are some notes on picture study and other resources to help you. Over here on this column, you'll see free reading. And these are just a list of some of the free reads that are available for this or recommended for this year. Now, this isn't the comprehensive list. For the comprehensive list of free reads, you're gonna go back to your book list and you're gonna go to the free reads on that list. Um, that's where you'll find the actual links for the books and so on and so forth. Okay, let's take a look at this little chart that we see here. Now you see that there's three different formats. There's a PDF, there's a doc, and there's an ODT file. So you can pick and choose your file type. Um, doc is going to be editable, whereas a PDF is not. But if you click on this, it opens up a chart that consists of all the weeks and the readings that we just looked at in that schedule, in the 36-week schedule. Uh, you're going to find in the first two pages, we have term one, weeks one through 12, and, and I apologize, my little circle is just hanging out here. He doesn't want to follow me right now. Um, so hopefully you can see my mouse. But um, term one is going to be weeks one through 12. There's two pages per term. Now here we see term two, weeks 13 to 24 across the top. And then term three is weeks 25 to 36 across the top. Here we see those weeks. And if we look a little bit closer, what we find here on the left-hand side is the subjects. So we have Bible, history tales, natural history, and the books related to each of those are going to be listed here. And so you'll see how they're scheduled across each of the weeks. This is a term at a glance, all the readings. And the way that this is so helpful is you can see, for example, here, Island Story. Uh, you're reading it every other week. You're reading a chapter every other week. And here you have Trial and Triumph, you're reading it uh, once in week two, once in week seven, and once in week 12. So if I have a particularly busy week, uh, and week two is just really piling up, I could go, oh, you know what, I'm going to take Polycarp, and I'm just going to switch that over to week three or four. But I do know I have to get it done by week six, because gosh, Blandine is a second chapter that's coming up, so I don't want to push myself too far. Um, and so we can kind of pick and choose and move things around and just get a greater visual using this chart of the schedule that we had mapped out below. And so this can be a very helpful resource. It's not a different res uh, it's not a different schedule than what we saw before. It is actually the same schedule, just organized in a different way to help us visually. Okay, let's go back to the home page. And the way we do that is always by clicking here on Ambleside Online on the logo. Um, and actually here you'll find what we call breadcrumbs. This tells you where you are on the website. You have the home page. Uh, you are now in the by year section um, in the Ambleside Online Year One book list. So you went to, from the home page to the by year, year one book list, and that's where we are. So you can always kind of go back here if you want to, to some of the different areas that you clicked on. Um, if you click on home here, it'll take you to the home page. And as always, uh, the Ambleside Online logo will take you back there as well. So that's it for the Ambleside Online Curriculum General Overview. I do want to quickly point out that when we go here to the Curriculum Overview and or here in the middle of the page in this column, Overview of the Main Curriculum, it's the same page that it goes to, we find a Modified Curriculum Options column. And there are multiple different Modified Curriculum Options here. Now, I haven't explained these on this video, and I don't have room to do that here. However, we will have another video that we put out that will discuss each of these so that you can have an idea of what those years and modified curriculum options are. So thank you for joining us for this video. We hope that it's been helpful to you in implementing the Amblesite Online curriculum and considering it for your family's needs.